Welcome to Bonehead Weekly. Would I bounce oh and God, hit the ceiling? Would it, been, would it have been one of those like super bounce balls? or? Well, okay. So we're talking about fornicating with Chad. But what we really, I, I want Chad. So by the time you hear this, this will already be over. But we're we're interviewing. We're, we've got a live show from Scarefest. Uh, go to Scarefest. This, well, hopefully you went to Scarefest. But go next year if you've already heard this but we're going to have lloyd kaufman on the main stage friday at 7 p.m we're going to be interviewing him live and that's we're all excited and chad i forgot where i was going with this basically we want to go down and play trivia the night before so we can beat jake gobold's ass and chad won't go with us and i called him he is not part of the team whip ass is that what i call it yeah something like that that sounds so right. if there was an james Propose your question. And, and so I said, you said he wouldn't play the game of. So that's no, what it was. man. And, and so I said, you know, in the 80s, 70s, 80s, even in the 90s, it was pretty common that if you had a board game, you would have a celebrity somewhere on the cover, right? I mean, if yes, it was absolutely. based on a, a game show, it would be the host of the game show. But like uh, Vincent Price did one for Hangman, and it was him dressed as a cowboy. Yeah. And so my question was, who would be on the cover of that home game, of that board game. Well, I mean, if we'd have so today's topic is what, Chad? Wrestling. Wrestling. Wrestlers. So it'd have to be at least one wrestler. Who who and eighties wrestling is really the only kind of wrestling I actually know and do watched. You, I so, mean, yeah. do you think that might be would it be Austin given that title though? No, because Austin wasn't around in the 80s early. i know that but All i'm right. saying given your title for your game wasn't that one of his you just opened a can of, i mean what of whoop ass yeah i guess austin, austin 316 says i just yeah anyway restate your question if you could be a duck and go into an <laughs> orifice what <laughs> orifice would you pick and I why like the one with winders and why and, 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 and like please saying, include a chart it wouldn't be the dmv dmv orifice <laughs> anyway no it's like well who would be on the, if you had a game of whoop ass whip ass yeah Wait, and by the way what's the difference between whip and whoop well i think i think whip uh you know it, it can oh, mean so many different things right i mean whip you can be oh i got whipped once and i'm it done only means saturday night to me but I think whoop means that it's harder, right? I mean, you don't recover from a whooping as quickly as you do a whipping. I it's kind of like, to put it in terms that we understand, Joe, it, whip is you're ruined, whereas <laughs> whooped <laughs> is you're weren't. So James is referring to something and our, our late friend Kevin Shelton used to say. Kevin's not dead yet, but we're just sticking assumptions. Would Jesus. somebody please share well, this? Well, maybe by the time this airs. I don't know. Be. I hope you know, not. We don't I know. Hope our not. late friend Kevin Shelton used to say, I'm going to keep saying that. <laughs> um, he would say is if it's ruined, you can fix it. If it's rent, it is rent. And his father would say clamp instead of clam. So we better clamp that before we're rent. Now, God rest his soul. He lives in Prestonsburg, Pikeville, somewhere. Who knows? I don't know. Somewhere uh, Lake Wobegon, I think. Is Wobegon. that a place? He's still alive. I know. Now, I don't know. I think it would have a wrestler on it. I mean, it could be Hulk Hogan. could be Mr. T. I mean, Mr. T was a wrestler, kind of. I kind mean, of, not officially, he, he, sure. He ventured uh, into it. I know. I mean, he, mission, he, he, Roddy, Roddy Piper hated the shit out of him. Oh, really? Why? Because he would, um, he would get... In the few matches that he had with the WWE, you know, promoting things, mm -hmm. Mr. T was not a wrestler and he would get too real. And back in the day, they call it WWF. Yeah. And so the panda came along and ruined well, everything. panda came over and said, no, you take it in the ass, Vince McMahon. <laughs> well, there was a, there was a, uh, there was a, at one of the WrestleManias, there was an event where Roddy Roddy Piper was to box Mr. T in the ring. Full on boxing match. Yeah. Um. And Mr. T came at him too too fast. He was like really like hitting him. And Roddy Roddy Piper got pissed, and he decked him, and then threw him out of the ring. Mm. And he, Roddy Roddy Piper got fired right after that. I can't so um that. yeah, it just pissed Roddy. Uh, and he'd done some other stuff. Uh, by, uh, before that, Roddy just hated him. And and Roddy was a true wrestler. He was like, you know, these are rules we abide by. A wrestler's a wrestler. 
a wrestler's wrestler. Roddy yeah. Roddy Piper was truly a wrestler's wrestler. You should go listen to some of the podcasts that he did before his death. They're really fascinating. Um, I've yeah, listened he, to interviews before, Chad, but I'd never heard that story before. He And he's a great storyteller. And I've said oh, this yeah. many times on this show, but I want to say it again. Now, we, we've been trying to get around the wrestling, and we're going to – each one of us is going to take a different angle with this. Mm -hmm. But what I've said before, and I'll say it again – other than having the priv that having the privilege to do some of the stuff that we've done outside of our own work and how we make a living is that I often say is my favorite interviews or some of the most fun ones have been wrestlers because they just have the most bad shit stories, especially if they're of a certain age mm -hmm. before the internet. And these, these filthy buggers went from town to town like sailors. Yeah. And they had a good time. I, I mean, there's the whole story uh, on how the, um, what is it, the toys that made us about the yeah. wrestling figures. And then the guy who like really got the WWE, WWF action figures going and how they, he had all the guys in the room with him. And one of them took a big old shit in his bed and it yeah. was probably Hulk Hogan. Yeah. <laughs> now, in, in, in the, uh, the 30 of 30 or whatever they call them, the ones they do in ESPN, I mean, and Ric Flair, all that shit's true. Mm -hmm. And there's stuff that they leave out. And there's stuff, I mean, I, anyway, I was in Huntington, a couple of wrestlers, uh, the Rock and Roll Express actually were telling me even more shit about Ric Flair. Yeah. Stuff that doesn't even come out. The man, I don't know why, he should not still be alive. No. So by and large, some of the best stories often come from wrestlers, or as they say in our beloved Eastern Kentucky, wrestling. Now, I will he, say... Go ahead, James. Oh, well, I was going to say, hey, do you think part of that is, you know, it's, it's, it's wrestling is all tied up in, in, in a persona, right? Yes, absolutely. But mm -hmm. you have to maintain that persona, right? You can't be off your persona, even if you're in the general public, so to speak, if you, because right. you always have to be on. And I, I wonder if that feeds into that type of behavior. Um, and, and there's, 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 um, some of the story, and I agree, the wrestling stories. I'm not a huge wrestling fan. Neither am I. But there are some wrestlers that, as Joe already illustrated, have these epic stories, like um, Mick Foley, uh, Mankind, mm -hmm. all of that stuff. If you read his biographies, I think he's written two or three of them now. But he yeah. did one about his early career. Was it in? Was it Chad? Do you know? Was it Japan that he wrestled in? Japan. And it's I mean, insane. He, he, he wrestled all over the place, but German, Japan was where he really went crazy. Yeah, it was insane because he talked about they were like, we need you to do something extreme. So he would wrap actual barbed wire around his fist and it was cutting him. It was hurting him way more than it did anybody else. But he goes, I had to do I had to have a gimmick. I had to have it. I'm like, yeah, I probably would have thought of something different than I'll wrap my own hand in barbed wire. But I, and I want to say it was Germany is where he actually lost his damn ear. So yeah. Yeah, it's his a, ear fell off. It's it's a sport for many many years where they went town to town. Yeah, sport about absolutely right about ego and a persona. James, you're absolutely correct, and it's filled with what testosterone. Well, yeah, because you also man. what you got to think with wrestling. And by the way, I to get to talk about let's talk about this a little more because I, I do want to talk about this. But just to re you both said you're not big fans. I probably am the biggest fan out of all of us. That being said, I'm not a fan anymore. I mean, I was I was a huge fan as a kid. Saturday morning, 11 a.m., WWE wrestling came on, WWF wrestling came on right after cartoons were over. And 11 to 12, I was completely enthralled in wrestling. I loved I loved everything about it. Me and my brother, the only thing me and my brothers agreed on when we went to the video store is if the, the latest pay-per-view wrestling event was there, we rented it and we spent three hours watching it. Yeah. Um, and every time there was a late night primetime main event, we watched those as well. Um, now I stopped watching wrestling and then I picked it back up briefly when I, in my late teens and early twenties, when uh, state stone cold, the rock um, D generation X were, were at the, were at their peak. And I, I, and mankind, I really got involved in that. Um, but yeah, I just, I'm not a huge fan. So, I mean, I, but out of the three of us, I think I'm the biggest out of all of us, but yeah, I mean, but, but going back to what James said, I mean, you got to think these guys went 365 days a year. Absolutely. Town to town. Two to three shows a day sometimes. Two to three shows a day. 
abusing their bodies in every way you could possibly think. So yeah, not only did they have to keep these personas, but they were tough as nails to begin with. Plus they were, you know, Medicaid, self-medicating, self-medicating jocks who had to, had to be rough. I, and, and I mean, am I condoning some of the behavior that some, a lot of these guys are known for? No, there's a certain wrestler I knew who got moved to, um, a little, one of the, uh, lesser, um, wrestling venues in Louisville because he just was too bad. He was too drugged up in WWE. So they moved in and he caused a lot of problems in Louisville because I heard from friends who worked in bars and stuff, how he would just come and wreck them because he could. I mean, and well, there's no way condoning that, but you know, you also got to think of the environment that these guys go through. Well, I was about to say, and I, I know someone personally, uh, um, that went through the training to be a wrestler and just hearing him talking about it. And he, he briefly did it and then he retired. Um, but you know, he talked about like the way he could tell you exactly how far his fist would go. Like he, mm-hmm. he could do the, and so he talked about, you know, when they're doing it and how do you make it all look real? How do you make it all look? And he goes, you still get, you still get hurt. But yeah. how do you do these different things? And it was fascinating to hear him talk about it because, as you all said, they're they're abusing their bodies. But at the same time, what shocked me was how well he knew. Like he could pull his punch at the last second. He knew exactly where his arm ended. And I'm like, I stumble around when I'm by myself. Like my coordination would not allow for that. I am not. So th- there is a high level of athleticism, but it's, it's, yeah. it's just a fascinating well, thing. You know, it's, it's like this too. Um, the, one of the Jake, the snake, there's two Jake, the snake documentaries. And then there's beyond the mat with Jake. All the snake. good. All, All good. good. All good. And that, Jake, seeing, that redeeming Jake, the snake with diamond Dallas page. Yeah. Is fantastic. And that's the one I'm actually going to reference. And, and I'm not referencing Jake, the snake, there is a scene in there where Razor, uh, the the late Razor Ramon, Scott Nash, um, joined them because he was in rough shape too. And they're in a room practicing and there's this loud, loud click going on. Like they're, they're just, they're doing their, and it's a very loud click, like so much so that it's, it sounds like there is something like clacking, like two clackers going together. And Jake is looking around going, what is that? What is that? And Scott starts laughing and he goes, it's my knees. He can't even bend a knee because there is no cartilage. And it literally is just sounds like they're just snapping, like, like tree branches snapping every time he bent his leg. Could you imagine living like that? Just no. can't. So yeah, it's, it's a rough world. So I, we want to talk about the, some of the wrestlers that we like, some of our favorite wrestlers. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take the, position of we're going to kind of bounce back and forth and we're hopefully we just have conversations yeah i'm all over the place on this one so yeah me too so let's talk a little bit about the wrestlers going to hollywood first if you don't mind i've got myself pulled up uh that it's i wonder a bit a ton i was gonna say did hulk hogan start it because i feel like there were there was others before him. can i talk about one that is actually one of my favorites and as i was researching this i actually went oh my god i didn't realize how much he had done and so I'll, I'll I'll do a little bit of a backstory first, as I usually do. He started as a boxer professionally, mm-hmm. retired from boxing, and moved into professional wrestling in 1960. Um, and got picked up to start doing acting work by some hack named Kubrick. <laughs> uh, made his premiere in. A Clockwork, Clockwork Orange. Orange, and went on to Barry Lyndon. Yeah, uh, he's in the Monster Club, which has Vincent Price. He's in the Conan movies. He's in the Indiana Jones films, the first three, mm-hmm. um, in different roles. He's in Willow. It's Pat Roach, and and so he, he retired from Pat, boxing. I didn't know Pat Roach was a wrestler. I yeah, didn't he, know you were going to say Pat Roach. I thought you were going to talk about David Prowse. No, no. Actually, here's a funny story. Pat Roach wanted to be Darth Vader, but he was actually a little bigger, I guess, David, allegedly. Because the same damn movies as David Prowse. Yeah, he, he's allegedly a little bit. I don't know what they meant by bit, bigger, if he was broader or if he was just bigger. I don't know. But he wanted to be Darth Vader. He didn't get the role. And so 
Stanley Kubrick, uh, he had already done. He's he he plays the bouncer at the milk bar. It's a yeah. bit part, but he he is in Clockwork Orange, and then he did uh, Kubrick, and he he's a hand to hand brawler in in Barry Lyndon, um, and he kept playing in different roles. He he had a non speaking role in Clash of the Titans. He was the blacksmith. Uh, um, I always mess this up. Hephaestus, right? The blacksmith of the gods. Um, yeah, I always, always go. Uh, oh shit! What? Why am I blanking on his name? The drunk. Who <laughs> we got a great story of? Uh, oh, uh, oh, Jesus Christ! Ew, what are you talking the, about? We, we got a great story from our one of our interviews about him being so drunk. And Oliver Reed. Oliver Reed. Uh, Oliver Reed. Oh, in, yeah, um, Oliver Reed. Yeah, yeah. In a uh, uh, Baron Munchausen, he played the same. I'm sorry, but he. Oh, it's so, okay. You just lost me. I was like, yeah. You're, he's also. Do you know how many drunks we've met? And I'm the one that came up with Oliver. I'm the one that did the Oliver Reed question. I just blanked. It's what happens when I'm thinking off script. Ugh. Go. He, uh, but he did audition for Darth Vader, and he didn't get it. But George Lucas remembered him when he needed somebody to play the German pilot that eventually fights Indiana Jones and unfortunately meets an airplane propeller. And so he cast him in that role uh, because he remembered him from that. Oddly enough, though, he people don't tend to notice this if you're not a diehard Indiana Jones. He's in the film twice. He's the German mechanic that fights him, mm -hmm. but he's also the Sherpa that fights him in Nepal. Yep. Oh, my shit. I didn't notice that. So he plays both roles, but he he uh he he was just a big guy that you know worked really well in all these different roles. He was he also a, a businessman. He, He's a very smart man. Because like, unfortunately, he played, he played Atlas in the Storytellers. Yes, I was about to say he's in the story. He's in a James Bond film. He's in Never Say Never Again as one of the assassins that goes after James Bond. If you are a fanboy like me and you love Indiana Jones and James Bond and all that, guess what? You've seen him, and uh. He was a very smart man. He was also a businessman. Unfortunately, he developed esophageal cancer and died relatively young in his late sixties, mm -hmm. um, which makes me wonder: Did he have a, the same genetic issues? Anyway, uh, with that being said, he, he, he looked, did a lot. He, I'm not meaning to keep. He looks like a cigar smoker. I'm just saying. It might be. Yeah, I'm saying Pat Roach literally looked like a guy who would just have a stogie in his mouth at all times. Uh, he he ran his own gym, of course, uh, as many people did. Dave Prowse had a gym for a while. Right. Uh, but he also ran a scrapyard, a, a steel scrapyard. So he, he had multiple business ventures. But again, if you're a fan of 80s films, he's also in, I have mentioned, he's in Conan the Destroyer, directed by the great Milius. Um He's in Red Sonia. Willow. I mean, Conan, Conan the Barbarian is directed by Milius. I'm sorry, I, you're right. It's Conan the Destroyer is not directed by. Yeah, it's not directed by Milius. Um, but then he also did some TV as well as, as Chad said. He's uh, he was in the Star Hunter, the short-lived science fiction TV show, which you can pick up on DVD for relatively cheap, and it's worth if you find it cheap, worth watching. Um, but yeah, he he had been at one point the British heavyweight champion and the European heavyweight champion. He was um, also, uh, he did some promotional work for Premier Wrestling Federation when it was an upstart thing in the early 90s as well, which has kind of disappeared or been absorbed by another organization now. But he's also an author. He wrote um, uh, different books about um, his hometown, about Birmingham, England, not Alabama. Um, and then uh, biographies of what it was like to be a child and being big. Um, and so, but yeah, I, again, I, Joe thought of somebody else, but yeah, definitely Pat Roach is just a, most people don't know him as a wrestler, but he definitely was. And I would argue he's probably one of the earliest examples of somebody that went from wrestling into acting that people would recognize and be like, Oh, that guy. So what I want to do really quick is go over the fit. What Google says is the top 15. Okay. Because there's hundreds, there's hundreds, but we want to, does that sound good to you, gentlemen? And then That's we'll get some of our favorites. So Dwayne Johnson, of course. Of course. Steve Austin, who, I, I mean, there are some movies, but I, I don't even uh, think he. 
No, Joe, he has a lot of low budget movies that he Is does. Is there that many? But there's, there's nothing that sticks in my mind other than the the other than the Longest Yard with Sandler. No, that, you know, he, uh, isn't he, he done, in them uh, Expendable films? He, oh yeah, he is in he's in one of them. But yeah, he did. A, he's done a lot of like straight to streaming or video, like low budget action films. Roddy Piper, one of my favorite, gives one of the best performances of any of the wrestlers, an actual acting performance. Roddy Piper in They Live. Uh, Randy Savage, fantastic in this Spider Man. Uh, Stacy Keebler, I don't. I had to Google her. I didn't even know who she was. She dated George Clooney. I, mean, I didn't know she. I didn't know she was an actress though. And, and I'm not being a smart ass. It really that means I was like, oh, I mean, yeah. I I didn't know who she was. Who hasn't dated George? <laughs> who Clooney? hasn't? He hasn't. He dated my crush for years. That lady played Emmanuel's and uh, oh, uh, oh my God, mine too. What's her name? Oh, I don't know. She's a good actress, by the way. She really is. Uh, she's the uh, in um, oh, what's that movie where they're all in the liar, feast? liar? She's uh, in feast. She's the she's the heroine in feast. She's a fantastic actress. So I had a crush on her for you. I still would. I still have a crush on her. Anyway, Dave. I do too. Uh, so sad. I can't think of her damn name. Anyway, I know I'm blanking too. And I, I you, Chris Allen. Chris That's what Allen. I didn't yes. look it up. Chris she's Allen. A, she's a great actress, by the way. She really is. Check out Feast. She does. It, she's the best actress in that movie. So, I, where was I at? Damn it, Chad. I got thinking about Chris you Allen. Said, you said Stacy K- K- Dave Batista. Uh, Dave Batista. Yeah. Is really famous now. Hulk Hogan. Probably, uh, but the wait, first real quick. Superstar. I'm surprised you haven't listed somebody yet. I'm getting Dave kinda... Bautista, by the way, for those that don't know, uh, you would know him from My Spy <laughs> uh, or maybe Guardians. Of the... Actually, I did watch My Spy, I uh, did too, but it came out, it was going to be in theaters, and then that, COVID <laughs> I hit. It, yeah, and I watched it with my family because yeah, my kids too. were like, Oh, that would be cool. And I was like, Yeah, yeah that's great. I yeah. watched it with my girls, yeah, yeah. So, Jesse Ventura, another actually good actor. Paul Michael Levesque, I don't know who that is. Is that is that oh what is his name? What is his actual name? What did he wrestle under? Triple H. Oh my God, yeah, he's yeah, I guess Blade Trinity, and he did the the chaperone. I don't, I mean, a lot of yeah, okay. And you still have him. I, I must admit, I'm assuming I missed uh, the name. There, we've got a few more. We got okay. Few more. So uh, this is just the first fifteen I'm doing. So and I'm going to leave one or two of them on because I didn't even know who this was. John Cena. John. Cena, okay, there. Yeah. I'm surprised Cal. he is not. Okay, plain and simple. I'm surprised he's not at the top. And out well, of everybody he is across the top, but I'm just kind of going here, well, and here, here. And out of everybody we've mentioned, and I, the, and this goes for Dave Batista and The Rock. He is the most gifted actor. You think so? Oh my God! Yeah, he has he has a wider range of emotion. I think uh, he can he can really do any emotion. If you did, just watch the Peacemaker, man. I was going to say I did six watch the Peacemaker. I was like six or seven months ago. I would have argued with you, Chad. But honestly, the Peacemaker. I'll tell you why John Cena won me over as the Peacemaker in the Peacemaker show. The movie's great, but whatever. The Peacemaker show. Here's where where it won me over. That bloody opening. Yeah, because if you can do that stupid dance with a straight face, and by the way, I, I, I we got Scarefest coming up. By the time this airs, I know it'll be over. But that's why I want to talk to Robert Patrick again. I I think I've met him before at a con, and that was great. But now I'm just like, you play <laughs> Peacemaker's father, and you are literally one of the most terrible human beings on the planet in that role, and you do it so well. But yeah, you I also mean, have that dance intro. No, seriously, and I mean, it just I, I'm 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 harking on the peacemaker. I'm wearing my I'm wearing my kids' fake fingernails for some reason. Yeah, literally, the fact you didn't warn us made it work. I, like, <laughs> I missed it. I was was still ready. Oh, that's Struck. good for you. She left him here, and I need something to fidget with, so I put How him on my that finger to masturbate with. Keep going, Chad. <laughs> no, I mean, if you look at uh that that the one scene in in the Suicide Squad where he kills flag mm-hmm. and you see in his eyes what he's done and then throughout all of peacemaker where he's dealing with that his 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 uh feelings with his father you know even when he sits down and just randomly plays the piano out of nowhere i mean I, there as many movies as dwayne johnson has done none of them show the the, the skill level that john cena has done in those few roles and i, I love the rock. i'll give I love you, no johnson. no no i'll give you i'll give you the rock is a is a movie star yeah, yeah, he is. He's he's the he's Movie when he stuff. when he first got started, 
he was supposed to be the next Schwarzenegger, the next Stallone. And then his career kind of fizzled there for what about five, six years, and I then would it not picked back up again. Fizzled, but I do think he's he in, fizzled, in certain, and he has he is more pro. He is on his way to be more prolific. Yeah, he 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 was followed by a bunch of duds. I mean, he I, first off, I love the rundown. One of my favorite, not one of my favorite, but I love it. And oh, right, it may be movie. it may be my favorite rock film. Um, but, um, I got Dwayne Johnson, but anyway, um, but then it was followed by the, the, the tooth fairy, the walking very, tall, he made are, a lot of successful movies that we just don't like for Disney. Yeah. Yeah. But again, it was just like, he really like, it was like a five-year lull where it was like, oh, he's not going to get to that status. And all of a sudden he just blew up. And I mean, he's, he's made a lot of great films. So Wow. Keep keep going. You you stop. Yeah, it, no, Cena. no. I was just like, I don't know. I was I was actually I like the Rock is one of those people I really like. I would like. I just don't. I I I don't think he's ever had that role. No, he hasn't. He's never had that role. He's never had that not safe role that that he can own other than himself. Sorry. Yeah, I, like I said I, again, I'm afraid. I'm not saying Dwayne Johnson's not talented. He is, and no, I think he no, could no, pull no. It John off. Cena is a better actor. Yeah, I'll give yeah. you that. So Kevin Nash, whom I've had the privilege of meeting twice, and is so oh. damn big. What? No, how is he in person? By the way, uh, he was extremely respectful to me. He didn't hit me. Uh, like another uh, Greg Valentine hit me right across the chest. I, he I did it as a joke, loved, it hurt. I would have loved to have gotten hit by Greg the Hammer Valentine. No, you wouldn't. Probably well, not. Maybe, but no. Well, maybe you're a masochist. I'm not a masochist, so it wasn't fun. It's a good story to tell if somebody. Well, I was gonna say, I, I think it depends on if that person's your hero. As somebody that has been hit by his hero, it means something different. James, he was not my hero, but he's a fun interview. Yeah, he's a fun interview, and him bringing up his damn. So we're getting off Kevin Nash. Kevin Nash is a nice enough guy. Uh, he falls into the category of being asked every question in every single way and does not enjoy probably doing Q and A's like some people do is, I, and I'm being, I, I, if it sounds like Would I'm you, being negative uh, towards him, it's not, it's not. No. I have done this job long enough to know that it's not everybody's cup of tea, but it's part of it. And they may accidentally or may actually be good with fans, but those Q and A's are tough for some of them. Well, and I, was I think say, he just, he falls in the category to answer your chat question. Chad is, is completely polite. Fine. Also doesn't necessarily want to be on the stage too long. Whereas John C. McGinley would have talked for three hours if we'd let him. Right. Sorry. But John C. McGinley's not a wrestler. I mean, no, is he? I would no, pay to see that happen. But the uh, so part of I was just talking about the Rock and Roll Express. Half of the half that half half would like to get off the stage and tell me dirty jokes. The other half would rather be talking about everything in his life. Yeah. That is a challenge because <laughs> one of them doesn't necessarily want to be, but he's complete. The one who didn't want to be there actually did just want to tell me dirty jokes off stage and just kind of, is very good one-on-one. Well, on one, you want, and I can... listen to the same guy he's been with for 40 years telling the same shit. He was done. Didn't want to do it. I would no, And I can kind of understand Kevin that. Nash, I mean, I, I would much rather sit and talk to a small group than I would lecture to an audience. And he, I, I will say this. Uh, some people aren't as big in life, right? Kevin yeah. Nash is fucking huge. Yeah. Oh yeah. He yeah. towered over me. Towered over me. And you know, I, a lot I, of times you, you don't see that because you know he's wrestling with people who are freaking huge, and he's like, yeah, he's not that big. And then you see him in person, it's like, holy shit. Yeah. Andre the Giant. Andre. Oh. There's an entire book that goes. It's a graphic novel that goes into his medical history, and it. Honestly, I if you would have pitched that to me, I'd be like, man, it is fascinating. It is done as a graphic novel, and it talks about everything, like because they can do the internal art, so to speak, of what he went through and what it was like to be him. And it is a fast. I can't remember the name of it. I'll look it up, but it's fascinating because he was not to sound like I'm a promoter, but when they build him as the eighth wonder of the world, sometimes he wasn't, but. He's That's somebody dude. that was somebody that literally had a medical condition that turned it into the positive the only way he could. He was a big dude who could cross the top rope. Yeah. Yeah. That's a big dude. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's a big ass dude. And when they when they wrote the Princess Bride, when William Goldman wrote the Princess Bride, it was always his intention for Andre the Giant to play the giant. I don't know if you guys knew that or not. No, I knew that. He, yeah. he saw him wrestle at what Madison Square Garden, I think the story goes. Yeah. There is more. There's I'm gonna name just a couple more because I real, real quick, by the way, the graphic novel, the graphic novel is Andre Giant Life and Legend. It's and it's written by and illustrated by Box Brown. Yeah. So if if you if you're if you're interested in wrestling at all and have not seen that, check it out. It is fascinating. So a couple more I want to talk about real quick, just kind of mention because we could be here all day. Andy Kaufman's actually listed as one of them, and of I, I, I was I, was, I know, but I was about to say no, and it's like no, he actually wrestled. He Robin. wrestled, and and he has one of it's one of the most famous wrestling story. Whether or not you know wrestlers, if you're of a certain age, you know about his encounter with a certain king. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, Diamond Dallas Page, whom we've all met and beat the shit out of James. Lovely gentleman, lovely gentleman. I, and I'll say that honestly, he was very nice to me the entire time, and told and mentioned a couple cool stories to me. So if you ever get a chance, DDP, Undertaker, and one of Chad's favorite of all time, Captain Lou Albano. <laughs> oh yeah, Mario. I, and Jake, what I actually, the, I was joking from... slightly on the last one. The one that I will talk about that James and I, I were Chad and I met, and I can't remember if James was there or not. George the Animal Steel was yes. also just the most polite human. Do you remember this, Chad? Yeah, dude. I have his yeah, autograph right over poster. there. Well, yeah. I know. I was just saying, do you remember? Yeah, I remember. Do you remember with R2 with 3PO? <laughs> because not only not only is he signing the poster for one of my top five favorite movies of all time, Ed Wood, mm-hmm. I was a huge fan of him as a wrestler. I mean, yeah, no, I remember every minute of that conversation. Yeah, I mean, it was just, he, he was, he wanted to know where I got that poster. He goes, everybody's been looking for this thing. How did you find it? Yeah, it was <laughs> I great. said eBay, sir, yeah. <laughs> and he talked to, gave us a story about, do you want to share the story he gave us about Tim You share, Burton? you share the story, yeah. So he was telling us about, you know, was it, it oh, was it Lisa It was Lisa Marie. Marie. It was Lisa, Lisa Marie. Marie, who's also a very beautiful lady. Oh, God. We've stunning. also met. And who was crushing on, as we were crushing on her, she was crushing on Chris Sarandon, Chad, as I recall, across from us. Is that correct? That is correct. And by the way, I don't blame her. I was listening to an interview today with Chris. I was watching an interview with Chris Sarandon and listening to it. And I clicked on it a little bit. And I was like, damn, he's 80 and he's still fuckable. And I'm straight. He broke Suzanne's heart. That's not actually how that happened. He talks about it. (laughs) It may be the other way. It's maybe flipping. Oh, that's it. And we got to take the the word of a man. The man, but it, he was giving her credit for that. He's uh, still a good looking dude, by the way, at 80. I yeah, I'm sure. Sorry. Uh, if I could look like somebody, it'd be Chris Ren. Now, I. He's Walter talking, Matthau. I'd look more. Well, I don't look like. I, if I could sound like somebody, I'd I was like talking Walter about Matthau. myself. No, I was going to say, you know, if you could sound like somebody, we all know who all three of us would prefer to sound like, Wolfman right? Jack? No, it's obviously Andy Rooney. No, Wolfman Jack. <laughs> no, Andy Rooney. Why do they not make fudge anymore? Joe? Seriously, I'm gonna have the ear hair of Andy Rooney. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna have the nose of Walter Matthau and the ear hair of Andy Rooney. I am screwed genetically. He's really not joking about this. So anyway, no. I, Tim Burton came on set, and I'm gonna give, give the short version because we're talking about. It. And apparently, he had hickeys on him. Correct? Yeah. Yeah. Where yeah. they were where they were just going at it in the trailer. Yeah, yeah. God bless that nerdy little bastard. Boy, he has a type. <laughs> he Obviously, has a... No, does he? Because, I mean, he went right from Lisa Marie to uh, Helena Bonham Carter, which is also a dark-haired cost. lady. And then that's who is that's his baby mama. Yeah. And then Who's he... also a gorgeous woman. Don't get me yeah, wrong. I'm just saying Eva she's Green. not. Yeah. Actually, I don't know if he and Eva Green are a couple. I just know she was in several of his movies. And also, uh, no, Tim Burton and I have the same type. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, not talking, let's get past the subject, but very wonderful memories of all those actors. Who were some of your all's favorites? I I want to start. Don't you, but back on the movie thing, though, don't you think, I know that there were other, well, I didn't know at the time because I just, James blew my world. I didn't realize that, but don't you think Hulk Hogan was the first to go like big time on movies? Hulk Hogan is the first. To be the top tier name. Yeah, I would say it is. It's Hulk Hogan. I don't know. I don't know box office wise, but I mean, the majority of his films bombed horribly. 
But no, it's Hulk Hogan. And John yeah. Carpenter talked about that, by the way, in interviews, because John Carpenter was a wrestling fan in the 80s, same time we were. And that's kind of how, you know, yeah. Rowdy Roddy Popper ended up in They Live. And he was his, his point was is they miscast Hulk a lot. Yeah. They you mean you, you mean Suburban Commando wasn't the Dude, seriously? So, of, it's I, a nice place to visit, it, but, you but know, I wouldn't want to live there. I love Suburban Commando still to this day. I haven't seen it. I did not I, like. I, I, 10, I'm going to butcher the line, but 50. I'm going to butcher the line. But where he goes up to those bikers and he does something to their, wheel, and he goes, "What are you going to do? You going to rip my face off? You going to break my arms?" They go, "No, dude, this is the '80s, '90s. We're going to sue." <laughs> Still, I, I'm I'm butchering the it's line. But no, I, no holds barred, Chad. Oh God, no holds barred. Tiny waners. And and the, what is that? What is that smell? Poo. God, that's a terrible movie. I loved that movie as a kid. And so now awful. I watch it because it's sheer awful. And I'd like, why did I like this movie as a kid? I don't know. I guess because it was, I still remember going to, I'm assuming it was Rupp Arena because my dad got lost and was panicked because he didn't go to big cities. He took us to Rupp Arena to see WWF. That's cool. Wrestling. Oh God. Yeah. I still have, it's one of my fond memories of my father. Um, he took us during the no holes barred time frame and oh, i got that, and right. i got the yeah and and the, people ask me like character actors and and luis guzman but also tiny lister is up there on on my list god bless god rest his soul and it's simply because it kevin <laughs> <laughs> so yeah throw no, back to 20 minutes ago folks i mean kevin. i seriously kevin got this still alive. it's one of my fondest memories of my dad getting me to the to the gate to walk them watch them walk out and i saw hulk hogan come out and I was excited to see Hulk Hogan, but I got to see Zeus, a.k.a. Tiny Lister, come down with his arms out, go, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I'm still fond memory of that. It's still, I, I could get teary eyed thinking about that just because it's, it's a, the A involves my dad, but B, it's a, it's a, it's an eventful a, a, a memory that I have that I still hold to this day. Um, but yeah, No Holds Barred, it meant a lot to me as a kid, but God, that movie's terrible. <laughs> it's awful. just awful. It's awful. So who was the first one that was cast correctly then? I, is it Rowdy Roddy Piper and They Live? I, honestly, I don't see. I don't know of any other option. Yeah, Especially I, I, in the 80s, there was a lot of trash cinema. And I, yeah. only, I mean, I, you could say Hulk and Rocky Three Thunderlips, but it's not really a role role. It's not a role. It's just a, it's a brief cameo. Yeah, I mean, basically. It, it, honestly, I think you're right. I think it's Rowdy Roddy Piper and They Live. It's just perfect casting. Yeah, yeah me I, and you agree it's one of the best fight scenes in cinema history it's the second best fight scene it's the second longest fight scene in cinema history well it's it's it was the longest fight scene it's it's in it's a minute or so many seconds longer than the than the fight scene in the quiet man and it just keeps going it's so amazing it just <laughs> it just when you think it's going to end still i have seen that movie a million times I still watch it and go, oh, we're at the end. Oh, no, we're not. <laughs> no, no, it just keeps going. And who could blame him? He had one of the most premier wrestlers on earth there. Why wouldn't you do a 20-minute fight scene? It makes no sense not to but do I think, it. And, I and think it also helps mistaken. that Keith David's in the movie. Keith David. And if I'm not mistaken, that was a, another time he was fired from WWE because he went and did that movie because they, WWF because they told him, no, we, we'll get something for you. And he, yeah. he said, no, 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 I'm going to do this. And he, they fired him again. It's unfortunate that he didn't have more of a movie career. And it's actually a quick story about They Live. And I, I don't know if our audience knows it. They Live actually premiered at number one yeah. and was number one for a couple of weeks. And it was pulled from the theaters at while it was still on the top of the box office. I don't know the reason for that. I don't know if there was something then, through that they were more important, but I'm just letting you all know that They Live was a successful picture. And tell me if I'm wrong. Box office. That's a rarity for John Carpenter to start at number one. It's an absolute rarity. There is, I could name them off the top of my head. Uh, Vampires, which is most people don't remember, but it was num opened at number one when it came out. That. And God, I was that's so excited. a fun movie. I was it so excited. It is a fun movie. Somebody was shitting on it the internet, on the internet the other day. It's I, based on a novel by John Stakely. Mm -hmm. Check it out. By the way, the novel's good too. It's still, it's different. I mean, there's it's it's different than the movie, but it, both of them are really a lot of fun. Yeah, but yeah, that and Chad. I don't know, maybe Christine or Starman, but I mean, there's not a ton. 
You mean yeah. Memoirs of an Invisible Man didn't premiere at number? I'm not being sarcastic. I I, I would think I don't Chevy think Chase so. I don't Carpenter. think so. No, I wasn't no, being yeah. sarcastic. I mean, no, that never, was a time when John Carpenter and, and and Chevy Chase was still. Mm-hmm. And by the way, Chevy Chase, I'd still talk to that man right this second. You guys see, if you get a chance, Bill Murray does his own podcast now. It's called uh, Club Random. And he does it in his kind of his basement club thing that he has on his property in, in L.A. Yes, thank you, Chad, for showing us if you're on the YouTube version. And he has his guest this week is Chevy Chase. And I swear, he's he's can be kind of, I wouldn't say rude to his guests, but he treats them like people. He yeah. almost, I thought he was going to blow Chevy Chase. He's so nice to him. <laughs> well, yeah, but by the way, I, I, Chevy's I we, 80. Yeah, that's what I mean. It, it, you're, you're talking about somebody that, and Chevy Chase has been more active online. I saw he he's doing. Uh, you could actually go and watch. Um, I want to say it's in Chicago. I may be making that up, but he's doing a live introduction to Christmas Vacation. Yeah, he did it in Corbin last year. Yeah, yeah. So he's doing more stuff like that. And I mean, I know William Shatner has done that with Star Trek Two. And so you're seeing more of these kind of. We're getting. I, I would. Say, now. I would say icons well no i think that i think we need to start having i think uh hulk hogan needs to do one for suburban commando that's what I was no thinking. no no holds barred so no, uh, I, I agree. Agree. I, you know what you know i what? agree with james suburban commando is way better than no holds i barred. am wrong i am wrong there is an there is a professional wrestler turned actor who beat rowdy roddy by about six months and he's also absolutely perfect in the role is the only two I can think of from the eighties, and it's Jesse Ventura. From oh, Predator. Predator. Yeah. Yeah, but again, I mean, he's not carrying the movie. Rowdy Roddy is the, the star. I he's, know, and he's just a he. That is a that is a movie filled with testosterone, and Jesse Ventura is just there to increase it. But In all Chad, fairness, the, he has all the great lines. He has ninety percent of the great lines in that movie. I'm aware, but. I just don't think it it's it still doesn't hold the gravitas of, of I Bailey. agree. I agree. It's a supporting actor role, not quite the same, but he is perfectly fit for that role. And it I is wonder a if movie we though both of those films have not went away in any way, shape. By the way, form. Jesse Ventura. Yeah. We knew, you know, just knowing a little bit about wrestling and the characters involved with that. I wonder if he was scared shitless of Sonny Landon. Uh, you know, I'd like this a good question, and we had there, so this is a little bit of bonehead trivia. We were going to do a short film. We did a short film uh, many many years ago, and Sonny Landham was actually going to be the voice in it because Sonny Landham finished out most of his life in Kentucky. He's yeah. passed on now, and he ran for state. He uh, lived in Ashland for years. At the time, it was in Ashland. I think he died actually in Danville or somewhere. Uh, wasn't in Ashland. Yeah, but uh, did I ever tell you all I actually got to meet him in person because we were yeah. back and forth on the phone? Okay, good. yeah, you told me. All yeah, right, yeah. so he's so I'm small, so <laughs> he's so small, but well, he is now. <laughs> well, now he's in the gray, Chad. Yeah, well, I know, but then I mean, he, yeah. yeah, the muscles were gone. Yeah, it's not even that, I'm talking about stature. Yeah, so anyway. Back to Sonny Landham and back. Yeah, I wonder if he had to be, you know, that that's a good question. I'd like to ask Rowdy Rod. I Rowdy, Je- can't ask Jesse him anything Ventura. anymore. But yeah, Jesse no, Ventura. unfortunately. So who are some of your roles? We named all these. I think The Rock is a movie star, but I don't think The Rock has a signature role other than being The Rock. No, I, I, I that makes sense always, to you all. Yeah, he always more or less plays the same type of character. He always has a... He always has charm, but he has this personality, and that works. It works. I mean, even in Southland Tales, which I seem to be mentioning more and more as I get it's older, actually may be his best performance. It may be his best performance, but but even then, he's got that attitude, right? It's the I'm, yeah. I mean, he's got the I'm a pimp and pimps don't commit suicide attitude. And I've seen the trailers for Black Adam, and now I'm starting to see some of the early reviews, and I don't think Black Adam is going to be the one either. Yeah, no, no, but I, I'm glad that he's doing that. I'm I'm actually I'll, I'll probably end up taking my son to see it. No, oh, I'm sure I will too. I mean, yeah. if you want to if you want to see a movie, honestly, it the reason it didn't get the play that it did is just because it's one of those generic um school movies, but he does give a quite a quite an amazing performance in the Gridiron Gang. 
Okay. Yeah. Considering and that's based on a true story, right? Yeah. Considering the the material he had to work with, and you know, it's just a generic. How do I reach these kids? Movie. Um, you know, it is, but I mean, you know, prime example, there's one scene, um, his mother's dying of cancer and he, he's, he see her because something's going on and he notices the kids aren't going out to play football. So he goes out to the, he goes out to their, their, their building and says, what's going on. And they, they present him with these flowers and this card that they all sign saying, you know, Hey, the next, the next touchdowns for your mom. And he just tells them to get back to work. And it shows him walking away, and you, and that's when you see he's an actor. His face, he he's not breaking, but you could see through sheer face movements that he uh-huh. is absolutely ripped to shreds by what these kids did for him. Um, and also, I mean, there's just random there. There's just scenes in that movie that show how talented he is. It's just he hasn't been given the roles. He may not want them because he has a brand now, but I, he could pull off something. He has that skill, plain and simple. Yeah. I, another one that, let's talk a little bit about Dave Batista because I don't, you don't like Dave? Uh, other than Guardians of the Galaxy, I have a hard time with any movie he's in because he just plays the same, like, stiff neck. He was okay. I liked him in the, the opening for the Blade Runner 2049. Yeah, I got, I don't, I, I've got, I, think... I don't remember him in that, honestly. I think one of the things that I like about him, and I don't know if it's necessarily his role, it's just the interviews and things that I've seen with him. I don't, there's not a way I can really say it other than it seems like he has some heart to him. Yeah, he kind of a genuine person. Yeah, Yeah, he is. He does not not hold back on what he thinks. And I love him for that. It's just, I haven't seen a role other than Guardians that really sticks out for me for him. Yeah. No, I mean, I like I said, I enjoyed my spy watching it with my kids. I did enjoy, you know, it was fun. Um, yeah, it was my kids. I got involved with it because my kids were, and and yeah, he he's okay in that. But again, I just felt like there wasn't a whole lot of range in that performance. I I'm sorry. What is another one? Well, he's also he's going to be more in, and he was only in it for a certain point. But oh, Dune, you know, Dune Part One and Dune Part Two. I, it's a good question. I. I, he's, and it's not his fault, but Army of the Dead's just, it's just trash. No, it's, it's again, and I, I think I had that. Uh, I'm not going to talk said, about it. I've <laughs> said this before. I'm just going to repeat it. I would have rather seen put two folding chairs side by side and just have Dave Bautista have a conversation with Tig Notaro for two hours. I'd watch that on repeat rather than watch army of the dead again yeah, yeah. and they, um, were, they weren't even together no no but anytime they're briefly even acknowledging each other uh, there's something about both of them that i'm like oh they're they're fun to watch i i do yeah anyway no i'm not agreeing i'm not disagreeing with you dave batista is fun to watch i just ha- other than other than him as drax i haven't seen a lot and again he's amazing as drax that's a role he was born to play in a lot of the ways he carries that movie in a lot of scenes. So, I mean, I, 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 I'm not. I it's, agree with you. And he's a, it's one of those born to play roles. He, but yeah, he well, has a signature role. I don't know that the rock has a signature role. Other no. than the rock. I mean, right? other than Hobbs, maybe. Yeah, but you're yeah. talking about where he comes into like the fifth or sixth movie in a franchise. And, and it's kind of cool, but I don't. I'll I, be honest, though. I, and, although and I, I did like that movie, I, I do not care for the Fast and Furious. I agree with James. That's Hobbs yeah. and Shaw is fun. Oh yeah, it's that shit only funny, and I don't have to hear about anybody's family. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I, know, I, 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 I completely agree. Shaw, this stuff out. I would. I don't know if they're doing a sequel to it, but I'll if they do, I'll be. Hobbs there. and I'll, Shaw I, is the most entertaining movie of that whole franchise. Can yes. we all agree on that? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, I had I fun. I, my son wanted to see it. He had never seen any of the Fast and Furious. I don't and have to deal with, it. yeah, and yeah. I don't have to deal with Vin Diesel's no range, we're family I, over and over again, and just saying, and then saying, and his his movie lines consist of one line that doesn't connect anything. It's it's everybody acting back and forth, and then yeah. he occasionally chimes in with a line that makes no sense. No, can I tell the story real Hobbs quick? And speaking, Shaw was great. Can I, it's, speaking was awesome. of, I of Fast and the Furious, can I tell this quick story that it literally we we hadn't so we. We were at Universal. We hadn't rode the Fast and the Furious ride yet. Yeah. 
But we went to we went to see something. I don't want to say what it is because I don't want the people who were there. I don't want the employees to get in trouble. But we were at a thing at Universal, and you're pretending like people listen or watch the show. Well, they they made a there was a comment made, and they they came out and they were like, "Oh, good, there's actually." We worried this was going to be as dead as fast and furious the ride is because no one's ever there. <laughs> well, it's it's reportedly sucked. Did you ride it? I, I did ride it. it. How bad is it? You're just driving along and it's happening on the side, right? Next yeah, time. basically. I mean, it's a motion sim, and then you're on a party bus, and there's yeah. so you remember it's... the earthquake ride? I was gonna say it's a King, it's King Kong the ride, then basically is what you're telling me. Except not as cool. Because when right. you do the King Kong the Skull Island one. Yeah, you eventually get to that huge King Kong, mm -hmm. and you get yeah, it's not that good yet. Is uh, I'm motion? glad I wrote it. I'm Is glad I wrote motion? it to say, oh, I wrote it, but it's nothing that's going to be that's going to be like, oh my god, let's get back in line. Like I, I'd ride the Minions twice, Chad, but I was like Fast and the Furious. I'm like, yeah, that's cool. Okay, we're done. I like we the Transformers. It. Is it? It's it's not as good as the Transformers. No, right? no, I like that one. We rode Transformers about six times, but I just thought it was so funny that literally the employees even acknowledged, like, yeah, nobody's over there, man. You can go ride all you want. You'll wait. If if there's a line, it won't be more than 10 minutes. And by the way, they're absolutely right. There's yeah. no line. It was, uh... So how was the King Kong ride? Not to get off wrestlers, but I haven't got to ride it. Oh, it's great. It's roller, uh, I mean, if, right? you, if you like that kind of interactive, you're on the thing. Monday, we'll, we'll loop this back for you, Chad. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, it's, it's a good time. It's, I mean, if you like Kong, yeah, and and the walkthrough part's really cool, where you're supposed to be going through the tribal area where the tribe yeah. that kind of worships it. That was cool to walk through. All I right. had a, I, I had a good time. Anyway, so back to wrestling, King Kong Bundy. Uh, has he been in a movie? I don't think he has. He has, and I was just trying to bring it back. But you know who was Chad, and who is one of the only villains um, that got a a Billy Jack line thrown at him. That would, of course, be Bam Bam Bigelow and Major Pain. Pain. <laughs> I'm going to take this here leg and put it up that side of your head. I forgot about Major Pain. And Cut Bam Bam that Billy Jack BS with me. Bam Bam Bigelow. So uh, we've kind of exhausted a little bit of the movies. Let's talk about, uh, because we wanted to talk about wrestling as a whole. So who are some of your all's favorite wrestlers? So I will start with saying that during i don't remember which wrestlemania it was it's right as i was probably sixth seventh grade i have fond memories like chad was talking about my best friends now well these are my best friends but my best friend growing up was, died a few years ago and then i have fond memories of he and i watching the one with the ultimate warrior and hulk hogan and i was an ultimate warrior fan he was a hulk hogan fan and i was screaming with pizza hut because i got pizza hut they brought that we got a pizza for pizza hut it was the most amazing thing ever no one understands that now. Thirty years. Oh no, no, yeah, no. I mean, I do, but yeah, I get it. Yeah, even well, though now no one twenty, no one who is twenty or young, or probably thirty or younger, has a clue that Pizza Hut was like a restaurant. You got to sit down. Yeah, and now I can't eat it because it hurts me. Tell me. No, oh, I'm sorry. Eat all no, that, guess, all that, uh, that, that greasy crust. That greasy crust, the best part. So that was probably me. That was the penultimate. That was the height of wrestling for me. Was all Just, that. I love the cartoons. I loved all that stuff, but just question. Yeah. Have you, and I know the answer, but have you in the last, let's say five years, maybe 10, have you ever rewatched the ultimate warrior versus Hulk Hogan match? Of course not. You knew that the answer to that would be no. I know. Holy shit. Is it terrible? Oh, I remember it being wonderful. Oh dude. So do I, I was like thrilled. So um, before they got merged into Peacock, the WWE app would occasionally post. Now, is all that wrestling on Peacock? Yeah, it's all on Peacock. So I can watch all that on Peacock. Oh yeah, you got if you got the subscription. Because I think I'd like to. Well, I do. You, I got a. You, the other day they had it for a year for twenty bucks. I almost got I, that too, and I passed it. Oh, it was worth it for me just to see Halloween Kill yeah. and end. Yeah, I don't tell me. I know I, I've been seeing posts, and nobody is happy with it, other than Glenn. Other than uh, Glenn, God King? bless him, I walk Glenn and Stephen King. Now I he and he argued with another guy we know, Jake, about it back and forth on my feed. I don't know if you guys saw it. I posted at the bottom of it. No, I, well, you guys go ahead and turn the lights on. I, I'll <laughs> I'm 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 stepping out. 
Stay, stick think, around the TV back, be back on in a while. Stick around the TV, be back on in the morning as they were going back and forth. He was using Stephen King on his like, Hey, Stephen King's my favorite living author, but he's also the guy that shit on Last House on the left and says the remake is 10 times better. And I like the remake, but there's nothing grimier than Wes Craven's Last House on the left. Yeah, I would agree or, with that. So let's say that not all of us always have exquisite taste. See Joe Lewis and Deep Rising. Yeah. So uh no, but uh if you've watched go yeah, ahead and watch sucks. go ahead and watch it, Joe. It is painful to watch because they literally are just running back and forth. They grab each other's hands and do a test of strength. It's nothing for about 20 minutes. Is it better than the Andre one where with Hulk and Andre? Yeah, it's better than that because they're actually moving around and Andre at that time was so so crippled from his from his body that he couldn't do anything. But so, you yeah, know, it's what's funny that. about that is, as bad as Andre was, there was an interview with Hulk Hogan. It's been several years ago now. Where he I know says, what you're talking about, James. Even then, even as bad as he was, he could have snapped me like a twig if yeah. he really oh, God, wanted yeah. to. Yeah, yeah. He, he, Hulk said it didn't matter, no matter what. If Andre wanted to end it, he would have. He could have ended. Right. Yeah, that's Andre. Yeah, he was just that powerful, even when he was that just in that much pain. But no, yeah, the ultimate, it's better than that, but man, it is almost 20 minutes of nothing. I, so I sit here and watch it one day out of, the side, out of the side of my eye while I was writing a paper, and I'm like, holy Jesus, there's nothing going on here. But yeah, no, it's the Ultimate Warrior. Go ahead. Well, no, I, 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 that's one of mine, so I don't have an Ultimate Warrior fandom or anything, but I did enjoy 80s wrestling because it was a pop culture phenomenon. Then the three of us are old enough to remember that. I mean, there was cartoons, there were cereal boxes, there was the toys, the many ones that we talked about, the toys that made us. Go ahead, James. I, I, I didn't watch wrestling. My dad hated wrestling, so we never got to watch it. Oh, well, I'm sorry. But Damn. I did video games. And one of my favorite wrestlers from that time period, because of the WrestleMania video game, was Honky Tonk Man. Oh, thank God. Honky Tonk Man. Ew. Honky Tonk Man. Did you know this story, though, Chad? I, as much as you love George the Animal still, I would assume you knew this story. So you know Honky Tonk Man's rival for a long time was Brutus the Barber Beefcake. Yes, they were. They had a hair cut match. Yes, I remember that. And it was good. he was going to cut his hair, his ducktail hair, as he said. Yeah. My duck, he ain't cutting my ducktail hair. Anyway. God, I hated Honky Talk Man as a kid. Well, it, here's it, the I didn't know well, the I think you were supposed to. Right? Yeah, he, he, was a, he was a heel, but he was one of the best heels. He was just so shitty. And what, do you know who his cousin? I didn't know this. Do you know who his cousin actually is? No. Jerry the King Lawler. And before they, when they were, when, when wrestling was still regional, if you watch the history mm -hmm. of it was the toys that made us, they talk about this. One of them was with a Memphis group. I think, I think Jerry the King Lawyer was with the Memphis group and he was with the Nashville group and they eventually merged and they actually fought each other in a tag team match uh, where they were paired up with other people. And of course it wasn't public knowledge that they were cousins, obviously. That being said, the story that I didn't know that I find fascinating because I didn't get to watch wrestling. I loved, uh, I loved him as a WrestleMania character and the old NES eight bit because he was the only one that had a prop. He had his guitar. Yeah. That being said, um, they they did a a a couple matches where there was a mysterious woman that was backing, uh, Honky Tonk Man. Do you remember any of this, Chad? Peggy Sue, the mysterious woman that she was always covered up that yes. backed. Yeah. And it ended up being Jimmy Hart and drag. Yeah. <laughs> Beef. Do you, do you remember who beefcake had eventually the mysterious woman who backed him? It wasn't Elizabeth. Was it? No, it was Georgina, which was George, the animal steel and drag. <laughs> oh, I forgot that. So anyway, but and so that was my first exposure was through video games. And Honky Tonk Man had what I thought were some of the coolest moves in the game. So I loved Honky Tonk Man. And that was my kind of, I, I couldn't watch wrestling because my dad didn't like it. God, I, if you, I, I think and, if you would have watched it, you would have not felt that way. Oh, I'm sure. I'm he sure. Was and, such, he was such I mean, a very good heel. He was. He was. Very good heel. Yeah, and he, but, he, he was always slimy. He never wrestled. He would always have somebody up as a van. He would always be, not the hair, not the hair. You know, he, yep. and he would always run away from everybody. He was just, a, he was just, not entertaining to watch, but he was the intercontinental champion. I think I don't know if this is still yeah, true, he but was. he was the intercontinental champion. He had the longest running, and now he's in the Hall of Fame. 
2019 you know, to get. You know who beat him? Don't J- Joe, Ultimate you know, Warrior. Ultimate Warrior in about three seconds. I don't yeah. remember. He came in. He he came in. Uh, Honky Tonk came in. Did his whole shebang. Ultimate Warrior ran down the stage, picked him up, slammed him. One, two, three. Ran back out. <laughs> Yeah, no, so, but anyway, so that it, was, it first was the it at that time, and I don't know if it's it was the quickest WWF match in 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 its history. Yeah, but I like I said, just one of my as a kid, since my exposure was through video games, and he was the only one that had a prop in the game, and it was a guitar, so I was like, well, that's cool. So no, I loved. I I think uh, we would do two player, and everybody else Hulk Hogan. And I was always like, no, every Blue Moon, every Blue Moon, uh, you do. Uh, the million dollar man, but most of the time I was like a oh, honky tonk man's the way to go. I love that. I loved it. I loved his moves off the rope in that game, all that stuff. So that being said, so that was my eighties experience. Do y'all want to talk about anything more recent? Because I got a couple from and I'll, I, I'll explain why I, I, well, I went, real uh, quick, Chad, who was your favorite wrestler growing up? Man, that is hard for me to say because I had so many. I mean, wow. I did. I it, it's kind of if you want to ask me who my favorite wrestler of all time, what at the time, you know, I would have said, God bless Joe. That's a hard question. My friend growing up, I, w- I will say his name, his name is Jack. And yeah. he had the coolest. I just so envious of it. glass with Andre the Giant. It was like a big mug. Yeah. My friend Jack was a lot bigger than me. He's a big dude. He was a big dude. And he loved Andre the Giant. So a lot yeah. of that rubbed off on me because he I mean, was pretty cool. I love the Ultimate Warrior. I mean, honestly. Well, let me do. Oh, God, Joe, you're putting me on the. Uh, oh, I mean, it's not that difficult. I mean, yeah. I mean, it is difficult, but it's. I mean, don't worry about it. So, James, what were you going to? Is while Chad thinks about it, what, well, no, what I mean, Chad got, doesn't want I've, to say is Chad's favorite was the Iron Cheek. No, I mean, so I've got. The I I do, I, By the way, I, he's I, the best one to follow on Twitter. Yeah, I'm sure. His I have politics three. are hilarious. He's I, very liberal. <laughs> no, don't get me wrong. I have three that I want to talk about. It's just picking between those. Um, but so I'll just pick this one. This is by far one of my favorites. If you had to pick a top five Chad wrestlers, uh, top five would be Doink the Clown. Really? I don't. Uh, I don't see you. You're schooling me here. I don't know Doink. I, no offense, meant Doink and Knights, but I don't know you. Oh well, let me school you on Doink the Clown, James. But I like to be called do 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 do. Doink Doink the Clown. If you didn't catch by his name, was a clown. What? I assumed he was a dragon of some sort. Uh, so he was played. Oh, shit. So his whole persona was he came out, and it it played this this circus music, and it was happy, and and you know he would come out and do the the happy clown stick. Ooh, la, look at me! And then all of a sudden he would become absolutely evil. The music would get dark, and he would just go absolutely psycho. Yeah, and it was cool because he he had that flip switch. It, he was played by a guy named Matt Osborne. Um, who I believe is also no longer with us. I could be wrong on that one. Um, maybe I am. Um, but he got started in the early, late 80s, early 90s. And that was his whole shtick. Now, every match he had, he would come out with some weird gimmick um, mm-hmm. as to how to win. Like uh, he fought um, this one wrestler. He came out like he had a broken arm. Yeah. But in reality, the arm was a fake arm, and and when the referee was was turned, he would take he ripped his arm off and bashed the guy in the head with it, and he fell down, and you know he pinned him. There was plenty of times where he would ha- he would because he was in complete clown makeup, he would dive under the stage when he got tired, and another doink would come out and start wailing on the guy, and then when he got beat up, he would go back under the ring, and the other one would come back out. It was things like that, and then he um he eventually had a um you know everybody had that that manager companion, his was Dink, yeah, who was a who was a a dwarf, dressed as Doink the clown, and he would go out there and fight. And at one point in time, he had a rivalry with Jerry the King Lawler, and they had a five person tag team where Jerry the Lawler had his his gang of King dwarfs, and Doink had. Let me get all their names. I want to make sure I have it. Queasy, cheesy, sleazy, <laughs> pink, um, and then wink and pink. And it was just rant. It was them going back and forth. The doink, like watching these these little dwarfs just like pounce on Jerry the King Lawler one after another. I could go on, uh, but yeah, he eventually would. 
he had these matches, but then it, he kind of became a punching bag mm-hmm. where he would just go on and do a performance. But then the bigger star like Jeff Jarrett or Triple H or um, Stone Cold would beat the shit out of him. And then eventually he would he went to the ECW where he kind of became himself, Matt Osborne versus and Dink. He had a split persona. Uh, but yeah, I always have fond memories of watching Doink wrestle because he came out and just made an made a complete spectacle of himself. And it was always it was always entertaining to watch. And especially when, you know, most of the wrestlers had these serious characters who just came in to do their moves. And, you know, see, see he was the most powerful. Doink didn't. Doink put on a show. All right, not to start wrapping things up, but let's wrap it up. Oh All shit, right. I've got two more. <laughs> I would say I got a couple oh. I got to talk about there, Joe. I I got a uh, so I I I came in later to wrestling and this is a true story. I went to college and my first roommate we didn't you have did? anything in common. He loved two things. He never missed. I thought Joe was going to talk about the bushwhackers, honestly. Uh he he never missed wrestling and he your I can't show. get this dad goddamn thing turned off about the mute. I I could have talked about the bushwhackers, but I don't. Other than doing that crazy dance, that's all I remember. Well, Dang. and that's what I was gonna say is, so I went to college. My roommate uh, oh, loved wrestling and loved uh, Spice World, the Spice Girls movie. Watch it once a week. What, it, God, I still can't get that, dude. I don't know, but anyway, that's so. He never missed wrestling, and he always ordered pizza when he watched. Re- <clears throat> I would get uh, yeah I used to Go watch ahead. wrestling I used to watch wrestling on Monday nights and I would get Mama Joe's pizza on occasion so yeah I was in the same boat for those <laughs> more head folks out there who remember the Mama Joe's I but... miss Mama Joe's pizza I know everybody thought it was trash she was cheap trash but man I loved it I thought it was one of the best pizzas I ever had we used to do mad mushroom pizzas when I worked in housing and, and they're not the world's great no offense mad mushroom I, I still eat it so I can't but anyway so I got reintroduced to wrestling then, and it was it would have been kind of ninety eight to two thousand that time period, and so he watched it. We it was you know old school dorm room. We had there was a television. You used to watch whatever your mate was watching, and there were a couple characters that I know I should not have liked them, but one of the ones that I loved, and I didn't know his backstory. But as soon as, like, the first time I saw him enter the ring, I was like, oh, this is going to be entertaining. It's not going to be great, but it's going to be entertaining. I loved The Godfather. <laughs> because when The Godfather came in, that is. it's oh, time to ride the ho train. train. Now that I remember. Did The Godfather say that? I don't remember. Yeah, he had... By the way, the, the actual wrestler. Um, are you are you going to go through all of his different personas? No, no, no it's Charles Wright. Charles Wright, and he wrestled as Chad just alluded to as was it Papa Shango? Papa Shango, the voodoo wrestler. Yes, he yeah. would spit. He would spit green mist on his people, on on his opponents. And that was the early nineties, so I didn't know him then. Uh, I got to know Papa him. Shango was the best. <laughs> I got to know him as the Godfather, and he would come in, and it was. As he said later on, eventually when WWF was trying to appeal to a broader audience, he became the good father, and he was more – he was he talked about his faith and all of that stuff. He had been converted, but I didn't know him as that. I only watched him uh, during that time period. 98 to 2000 was when the godfather was, and as, as Chad said, he always came in surrounded by women. And when it came from, you know, they always do the f- hailing from, he hailed from the red light district. Drink, yep. His entire theme was he's a pimp surrounded by hoes and he wrestles. Yep. And and he, and as as Charles Wright himself said, he goes, yeah, we phased that out when we had to realize that we were offending people. But it was the most ludicrous over the top because it didn't matter who he's wrestling. It didn't matter. Undertaker, you know, the Undertaker, they dimmed the lights and do the lightning effect. And then you'd literally just hear, let's get on the whole train. <laughs> and the pimp music starts playing. And he's, it was over the top stupid. And I was like, that's that's entertaining. It's it's comedy. It was so I had to mention The Godfather. I've got one other group that I'll mention, but Chad, if you want to. All right. To so I was conflicted because again, I had so many, I would talk about, I could spend, I could spend a whole hour. Just here's my favorite wrestler. Here's my, here's, here's another wrestler. Here's why I like him. Um, 
I was conflicted as my second pick. I was like, okay, there's, there's, and it literally worked this way. I did not realize I was going to do it until I, this happened until I did the research. I was going to talk about the repo man. I love the repo man. He was this guy who dressed up in a gray tight with a, a, a tire skid over him. He wore a little, little, uh, bandits mask and he would pretend to sneak around the ring and, and steal people. He had, a, uh, but anyway, but also to the, the, the tag team demolition. I love demolition. I love whenever they were on the screen, they were badass. They were, they dressed up like, uh, if you're familiar with eight millimeter, they dressed like the machine, you know, <laughs> they had red tongues. And one of the, my fondest memories is, um, they were in the Royal rumble and they, uh, both axe and smash the, the team that they made up demolition. They drew one and one and two, and they beat the shit out of each other until number three came out and it was Andre the giant. And then they both pounded Andre the giant relentlessly. They, they would not let, let off on him. And Andre just had, he could not control them. It was amazing. I would love watching demolition. I was shocked to find that repo man and one half of demolition smash are the same man, Barry Allen Darso. And never knew that until I did research for this. And it just happenstance because I was debating. It seriously was. I'm like, ooh, do I talk about demolition or do I talk about Repo Man? And I get to talk about both because they're the same person. And while you both were talking, I watched the whole train. James, you were correct. Yes. I, I want to go back and watch some of this. Yes. Dude. Yes. I, yes. I knew nothing about wrestling. Yes. He would watch it and I'd occasionally look over right. while I worked on my but computer. Now I, I am myself a member of, I, I bought a ticket. To board the whole, the whole train. train. Yeah, he was interesting to watch. Yeah. Go, Chad. Um, no, yeah. So uh I I love Tarmy Barry Allen Darso and the other half, which I don't have his name, Axe. Um, unfortunately, with 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 most wrestlers, he went way too long. And there is a there is a terrible image of him dressed at it still in that they uh demolition had this this leather straps that went down their body. Um, followed by a circular metal icon that connected to other straps and went around the back. And then they had like black rhinestoned under, uh, underwear on, and that was her uniform. And there's a picture of Barry Allen Darso, who is clearly in his early fifties, still dressed like that, um, with no hair, no nothing it, it, other than the, the, uh, and a cheap version of the makeup that they used to put on in the eighties and nineties. Um, but no, um, so he was in demolition from 1987 to 1991. And then he was repo man from 1991 to 1993 repo man did not have a very great career in WWE. He usually lost and usually lost spectacularly. Um, but he was, again, he's like doink. He was one of those personas on the screen where he just was the most sniveling little character and watching him fight these people who he had no chance of winning against. I think he fought Tatanka. I could go on. It was just interesting to watch him watch. And then, and then also back to demolition again, whenever demolition came on, on other than the Bushwhackers, they were my, they were my tag teams. I loved them. I mean, they, they would just come out in a, and they were just pure power. And you watch those guys and and whoever they fought, they just obliterate. And I loved every minute of watching a demolition fight. So yeah, James, what's your third one, man? I, I've got to mention this one. So this this was voted, and so again, it's the same time period. Late nineties was my my introduction to actually watching wrestling. And I only did it when I lived with that roommate. So again, my thing was Am I Entertained, which is why the Godfather worked on me. This group was voted the worst gimmick and the worst tag team in 1998. But because I can't I wait do, to see where you're going to go with this, because I do love Todd Browning's The Freaks. Oh, God. Who they used it as their intro. And by the way, that's the thing about the late 90s that I learned. I already know who you're going with. So it go was ahead. all about like, and Chad, you probably remember this too. They they would put the the intro themes out on the CD, right? Yeah, yeah. And you had been these themes, and I'm not a big fan uh, of Insane Clown Posse, but Insane Clown Posse did the theme, which was Freak Show for the wrestling group The Oddities. The Oddities. The Oddities, and so they used clips from Freaks. ICP blaring 
And basically, you had the one guy that was huge that carried around a plush Eric Cartman. Yeah. Which was, again, you got to remember, 1998, it was still. Yeah. And if if you're familiar with wrestling, I don't remember that. I don't remember the character's name, but he was Earthquake. Uh, in a mask and a and a Cartman T-shirt. If you remember Earthquake from the so from yeah the, the the characters were that and so it rotated memberships. But you had the Jackal that was the leader and he left eventually. You had Kurgan, which was the big uh, one of the big guys. But I think you're talking about it was Golga, wasn't it? Gogo, yeah. And then yeah. Luna Vashon was in there too, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, and that's another one. So Luna Vashon came on as their new manager when the Jackal left them, and they went from being heels into baby faces, and it, they tried to humanize them more. But the, the theme with Golga was that he was supposed to have a bone deformity, so he had to wear this mask all the time, which again kind of looked like Machine's mask. Um, and then George the Animal Steel came out and joined the oddities for a while as well. So that's actually where I first saw outside of Tim Burton films, George the Animal Steel, because he became this kind of, he became the the old pro that tried to mentor the oddities. And their entire th- gimmick was their oddities. Their, their, their background was, oh, we're freaks. We're a freak show that decided we're going to wrestle. It didn't make any sense. It didn't, but there was something about, and then for a while, Insane Clown Posse actually would join them in the ring and they played up that gimmick for a while. And then again, during this time period, you also had like Eminem appeared on an episode and would trash talk the ICP and it went back and forth and all of that stuff. And it actually ended up becoming this weird rap feud thing and all that. And so that's the that's the thing I will say about wrestling in the nineties was it wasn't just about wrestling. You had these musicians appearing, you had all this other stuff, and that's when I was like, Oh, there's more to this than this, right? And so, again, my wrestling knowledge is extremely limited because I didn't grow up with it outside of video games. But during that time that I did live with my roommate that was obsessed with all this stuff, I was like, oh, okay, The Godfather is funny, it's entertaining, it's completely incorrect, and so were the oddities. And that's I think that's why I was like, oh, if you take it all with a grain of salt, it's good, stupid fuck. And so I, so yeah, by the way, the oddities only made it, I didn't know they only made it a year and a half, Chad. Yeah, no, they, they were quickly 90, gone. 98, 99, but I, I remember them so well because I can remember the, the one match they took away as Cartman. And I just remember the announcer was like, uh-oh, oh, they got, they got Cartman. He's going to lose his mind. He's going to lose his mind. <laughs> and I was just like, it's, it's ludicrous. It's over the top. And I think that's those are the characters that I remember. It's probably why I also liked Honky Tonk Man. It was ludicrous and over the top, yeah. and I, that's what I appreciate. It, I, not not to <clears throat> not to be that guy, but if I wanted to see real wrestling, Greco Roman wrestling, if you will, collegiate wrestling, I would go watch collegiate wrestling. If I'm watching something like this, I want the over the top ludicrous, and that's what the, the the ones that I remember. That's what they are. Yeah. Not to mention, though, I, I do also remember, was it was it too hot and too sexy and together they're too much? Too much, yeah. And and it's kind of funny you're, you're tying these all together. One half of that with Jerry Lawler's son. Oh, there mm-hmm. you go. There you go. Um, So, Joe, let's revisit yeah. this where you said, Chad, who's your favorite wrestler? Yes. Um, And I had a hard time with it. I want to say this is probably, if you ask me who my favorite wrestler was of all time, I would say this. Uh, and he had one of the best catchphrases of all time. The best there ever there is, the best there was, the best there ever will be. Wolverine? Brett, oh, wait, no, that's a, I'm the best there is at what I do. Brett the Hitman Hart. Yeah. I would have probably picked, I'd probably say if you if you stuck a gun to my head, pick up your favorite wrestler, it'd be Brett the Hitman Hart. I loved, um, I've loved him since I, 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 I've watched wrestling. Um, yeah, during whole, he was always the small guy. You know, in the 80s, it was all about muscle. Um, Hulk Hogan, uh, Ultimate Warrior, all those muscle-bound guys. Yeah. And Hart was, Brett was just kind of this middle, he was he was huge, but he was still m- medium compared to all the, the bigger guys in the 80s. So he never really got his chance. He was always a member of the Hart Foundation, this tag team. But as these old older guys phased out, there was this time where the smaller guys started getting their dues and Brett, the Hitman heart really came out. His, pers- his personality just surpassed everybody's. And on top of that, most of these big muscle guys, 
they're they're great wrestlers, but they didn't have a lot of skill. It was kind of slam drop. Brett actually brought a lot of crazy skill to that. I want to point out if you ever want to see like true wrestling at its best, there is a match between him and the British Bulldog, who was also his brother-in-law. Um, they went nonstop for 20 minutes. We're just slamming each other, going off the ropes, just beating each other up. And, uh, you know, you know, it's staged, you know, they're planning this out ahead of time, but just watching what they're doing to themselves is phenomenal. They just don't, they just go for 20 minutes. And it was always like that with Brett because he always had to prove himself. Yeah, and this, I, he was the most skilled wrestler in my opinion, period. So, and that's another good point. And probably do you all have more wrestlers or are we rapping now? No, I'm rapping. I, I, I wanted to end on who I thought was the best wrestler of well, all time. And it's Brett, the Hitman. Hart. And, but so, before you go, James, real quick, is that it's a bloody hard sport. Yes. And yes, yeah. I know the endings are predicted, but they still beat the shit out of each other. I've said I mean, to these men and they are bruised and battered. And I was going to say, in brittle. all fairness, if you want to talk about how rough it is, I just mentioned Brett the Hitman Hart, who is by far one of the best wrestlers of all time, if not the best wrestler of all time. Mm -hmm. Look at his entire family. British Bulldog, dead. Owen Hart, his brother dead fell from the cage right Fell. no he he was supposed to be coming in on a wire he was uh -huh. he was he was caught uh he 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 had another persona and the wire snapped and he fell mm -hmm. all the way into the well the end of the stage yeah um uh chris benoit who i believe he was he wasn't related to i think he had, he had some kind of relationship dead horribly and murdered himself and his entire family and his family yeah i mean yeah it's just uh yeah if you want to look at how rough that sport is look what it does to people so yeah anyway go ahead R real quick I, the only thing i wanted to say we did the best or we oh, did what brett, we were brett hartman brett the heart had stroke so i mean there you go we did the best we did the ones that we think about all of that stuff i've got to ask this question to wrap us up then go for it who's the absolute worst oh jesus who had the worst theme I have a couple that come to mind, but go with yours and then I'll think about it. I'm I'm having a hard time with this. Now, I, I, and by the way, if I say uh, the one uh, one or two that you're like, oh my god, they were great, and you're just you're just crazy. But uh, I vaguely remember uh, a group called the Spirit Squad, and their theme was that they were male cheerleaders. I don't yeah. remember them being universally loved. And the other one that's that somebody reminded me of that was considered offensive was you had these great, you know, I mentioned the iron cheek earlier, right? You had these arc type, Oh, they're the villains or, you know, for lack of a better term, the Rocky four type mentality, right? We right. need a Russian to battle Rocky, the American, right? Um, the Mountie, which evidently was very offensive to Canada so much so that the guy that actually played him, who I believed his name was uh, Jacques Rognou, Rognou, I'm, I'm sure. I'm Jacques Jounet. But anyway, uh, he couldn't perform him when WWE went to Canada. So they actually did a, a show in Canada, and they had to cut the character uh, because it was uh, offensive. Uh, and at one point, they formed a tag team with him called, and let me quote this, the Quebecers. I like I like the mountain. He had a cattle prod. That was his big game. He did. He did. That's yes, uh, because they don't use guns. Yeah. All right, Chad. Who's your Bastion least Booger? All right, you got me. I have no idea who that is. Mine is Booster Gold. <laughs> fuck you. That's right, Bryce. I got your back. I mean, I don't uh, know who the fuck Booster Gold is, but Bastion Booger. He was just this horrible. He played this this. He was this huge fat guy who wore these. And look him up, Bastion Booger. He had these these weird gray tights. And his belly stuck a hundred feet out. He had no skill whatsoever, and he was just there for show. Hacksaw um, Jim Duggan. Hacksaw Jim Duggan is a talented wrestler. I'm sure he was. I just a friend of mine knows him, so yeah. Or no, uh, uh, yeah. I would I would say Bastion Booger, and if you, uh, yeah, I would go that route. There's there's also oh what's his name? Uh, anyway, I'm I'm forgetting his name. There was one that was like really giant. He wore a he wore a hairy bodysuit. He had no skill whatsoever. But Bastion Booger, worst wrestler of all time. 
All right. I, I'll, I've learned something. I'll, I'll have to go back and add that to my lexicon. <laughs> So this has been our wrestling episode. Hope you've enjoyed it. This is Bonehead Weekly. Sorry, I I, I know we're wrapping up. <laughs> I my just fo- wrapped up. I know, but my phone just it said uh, that I was looking at Bash and Booger, Chad, <laughs> and it actually said, if you enjoyed this, you need to check out this wrestler. And I'm just going to say the name, and I'm going to stop talking, and we'll wrap up the episode. The Fat Chick Thrilla. That's T-H-R-I-L-L-A. Never heard of him. I didn't either. I now I have to look him up. Good and night, Evan everybody. Shelton will be checking out the fat chick thrillers from the grave. Bastion Booger also dead. Bye. Grrrr. <sighs>